Hello, good day learners. Good friends here to continue with the section that uh, we left hanging, and that is the section for map work. Okay. And last time I was busy um teaching or telling you regarding the interpretation of maps, calculations, application of geomorphology topic. And now today I want to look at other related concepts to the application. Now, when you're given a map extract, please learners first understand that the map will be having this kind of things. There is what you call reference. Reference is a key. It's the key that you're using to try to interpret what is on the map. And if you look at it clearly, one side is Africans, another side is English. So for those ones who are understanding Africans, you can use the other side, this side here. For those ones who are understanding English, you can use this side. But now I realize that some learners are struggling to understand what the key or the reference tries to refer to. Please listen, learners. It's very important to understand what the different um, um, symbols or convectional signs mean. A case in point, we have got this part here, this part here, we have got uh, this part here known as the national road. And if you want to see what the national road shows, national road shows this first part, which is blue in color. Okay. Then this other national route, it shows this other part, which is red in color. So when you're interpreting, you must know that this one, the first one is for the first line. The second one is for a second line. We have the arterial route. You can see that arterial route there is one word. And if it's one word, you can see that it's completely one word. It's all uh, red color with R in between, which means it's uh, the arterial road. The main road, you can see it, same color. When you look at the second road, I want you to see. The second road simply means this road that is having this kind of color. But now it is a benchmark. The benchmark is this symbol here that you see. Okay. Other roads, this one. And the bridge is that sign that is just on the other roads. Tracking and trail, you can see track and, and hiking trail. Railway station and the high railway uh, station or uh, siding. You can even see this black color here. So this is this symbol here or this convection sign is for a station. Embankment, you can see this is embankment here. And then you have the cutting, which is this other side. Okay, the power line. In other words, you can be in position to interpret these symbols. I want you to look here. Somewhere here, we have got a post office. Okay, there is a police station and there's a store. Post office is P, police station is PS, and store is W. That is its convectional sign. A, police, a, a place of worship, school and hotel. This is a place of worship, K, school is S, and hotel is H. Now that's, that is how you need to know uh, to interpret the symbols. So the reference is basically assisting us to understand what is supposed to be on the map. So in this case, if uh, there is anything that you do not understand and you just look at it, please don't just look at this reference as just uh, uh, given information just there. It's not irrelevant. It's very, very, very relevant for you to be in position to pass or to understand what the map means. So we must understand what each one imply about the mapped area. It's not only those symbols you see there. There are some other symbols. You can see these ones here. I know when you look at the kind of maps you have, in most cases, you are, you will find that some miss symbols are missing. But in in case you in case you have been uh, um, doing with these other maps, you will see that a lot of symbols are existing. But now other symbols, you must be knowing them in your head such that you can be in a position to interpret them nicely. Take an example, international boundary and the beacon. See that? The national boundary, this uh, kind of line here, and then the beacon, that the other kind of line. Then there is a, um, a provincial boundary that looks like that. It's a bit different from this one. You see, these are two dots. These are three dots. You see that? So it's, you don't take things for granted. Take everything very relevant. Take everything very important, such that you can be in a position work with it. We have here a power, a, a, a water tower, a reservoir, and a water point. So this is a water tower, okay? A reservoir, this is a reservoir here, 
and then a water point. Water point is abbreviated with P, I mean F. Then we have a coastal rock. So this symbol is for the coastal rock and so on and so forth. So in other words, I wanted you to understand that um, in map work, every symbol, everything you see has got value, okay? So you must be in position to interpret. So before you proceed with understanding both the geomorphology, the climatology, how settlement is applied, how economic geography is applied, please start by understanding what the difference means on the mapped area, such that you can know that this is this, this one is this one, this one is this one, and that will assist us to be in position to interpret what we have on the map. Okay. Like I told you that it is interpretation. All right, learners? It is interpretation. With interpretation, we must make sure that we apply all the theory that we have learned so that it can be seen on the map. Take an example. We have looked at the aspect, valley winds, climate, slopes, landforms, settlements, land use, and all that. So we must be in position to interpret all those aspects on the map. Okay. So I want you to look at this. What do you see here? Here, you can see the issue of aspect, valley winds, climate, you can all apply it here and settlement by just mere looking at what each part is meaning. Take an example, okay? That uh, when you look at um, this kind of map, um, and when you check somewhere here, you can see that the contour lines here are depicting that this part here is steeper than these other areas, which is basically a slope, a steeper slope here compared to what is happening this other side. Okay. Then here is a protected area, natural protected environment that can be uh, a game park, a game reserve, and so on and so forth. So you must be pushed to interpret that. When you look at this one, what do we see? In terms of drainage, you can see that this is a high lying area. So these rivers are all draining outwards, which forms a kind of a pattern drainage in, in geomorphology that we call the dendritic drainage pattern. And when you check somewhere outwards here, it's lower than what is happening here. Okay. Now, you can see this part here, I want us to be in position to interpret the economic activities. What do we see? When you see this, this is showing the cultivated land. Okay. And if they talk about the cultivated land, what do you expect? You expect activities like agriculture, you expect activities like uh, farming, and so on that is likely to take place in that area. And to make it uh, to, to make it easy uh, easy to understand, you can easily interpret that this um, this cultivated land is basically located close to the dams, near the rivers and the furrows, meaning that they can easily have access from the dams to these farms and they use it while uh, practicing uh, agriculture. Okay. Besides that, there are some other activities that we can look at here that we can think of. Take an example. If you see here, this is uh, an excavation. Okay. That means there's some kind of mining taking place in that case. Okay. Then you can also look at this place. So this place has got mining being practiced. Take an example. We have what you call the um, Western Platinum Okay, Western Platinum Mines, meaning that there is mining taking place in this area. Now that's, this one can help us to interpret the economic activities that are taking place in this locality. Okay, now we go ahead and look at the aspects. All these ones are, applica are applications or interpretation of uh, theory or map work with uh, the different um, topics that we look at in geography. So. Like I told you that all aspects you look at are applicable. Landforms, microclimate, farming, recreation, conservation, and so on and so forth. So when you check here, what do we mean by conservation? This is the, uh, basically the using of uh, the protection of the environment or preserving of the environment for future use. When you take uh, this area here, eh? uh, Beck, protected natural environment. So Maharisberg protected natural environment is basically a conserved area meaning that conservation is taking place here. Okay, when you see the cultivated land, what does that mean? Maybe there is farming taking place here. And when you see that this is a bit, a little bit steeper, what do we look at? We can think of uh, the slope aspects, 
Okay, we can also think of uh, a microclimate that uh, the climate that is affect affecting very small areas. So, in other words, all those ones are trying to assist us understand the interpretation of maps using the different topics. Okay, so learners understand that any time, any day when you're writing your geography papers, you're going to find out that those topics are going to come your way. You must be in position to apply what you have looked at in theory. It is going to be very difficult for you to understand the concepts when you have not applied the theory or when you lack knowledge in the theory. Take an example. When you look at this slope aspect and you check this side, there is a lot of green compared to what is happening this other side. Remember when you talk about slope aspect, slope, slope aspect you look at to uh, where the sun is facing in relation to where, where the slope is facing in relation to the sun. Meaning that on the shadow zone, we said that that place is cooler. Okay, so if you're in the southern hemisphere, the south facing slope is much more cooler than the north facing slope. What is what does that mean? The south facing slope can easily favor uh, activities, more like um, can easily favor activities like the growing of forests because it's cool. Remember, trees need a cool environment. And when you check this other side, there's a lot of green this other side. And there's a lot of cultivated land on the other side compared to what is happening on the on this other side. So I want you to be in position to apply that is application. Okay. Be in a position to apply. All right. Now um we can also apply other topics. Bo settlement. Here we have what we call the shapes of settlement, landforms, land use, and topography. When you check around here on the maps, what do we see? We talk about the shapes of settlement. How many shapes do we have? We have a lot, we've got a lot of shapes. For example, the linear shape, okay? That is when the settlement is along a line. A line like what? Like a road. A line like what? Like a railway line. A line like what? Like a river. So in this case, if you see a, a road like this, and there are settlements along the road. Which shape, which settlement shape is more likely to be formed if it's along a line of a road? Okay, the line feature that would be there will be a road. And if you see this road, that means you will know that the kind of settlement shape is um, a linear settlement that is taking place. Okay, so besides linear, we have got what we call the star uh, shape. Beside the star, we have got another shape, like that is a, a circular shape. That is, for example, when the settlement is around um, um, the, the, the circular features, like mountain, like lakes, and I understand. We have also what we call the semicircular shape. For example, at the coast, at the coast, ocean side, you'll find that kind of settlement. Okay, so if they ask about the settlement pattern, what do you expect? Settlement pattern, I will look at the layout of settlements in an area. And you find out that it's either nucleated pattern or sparsed. Okay? Nucleated or sparsed. If it's nucleated, it simply means when the settlements are within one area. If it's sparsed, when the settlements are spread. So what will you see? You'll find out that there are some areas where you will see a lot of settlement. Actually, you must know that these are settlements here. So if it is concentrated in one place, it's nucleated. If it is dispersed, or it if it is they're spread away from each other, it is um dispersed. Okay. Now, besides that, learners, we have also the interpretation in relation to the third settlement types. Okay. We say the settlement types, that is rural or urban settlement. Then besides that, we have the settlement pattern, which we say that it is either nucleated pattern or or we nucleated, which is the same as clustered, or dispersed, which is the same as spread uh, pattern. Then you have the street patterns. When we talk about street patterns, what do we see? We're looking at the way the streets are being arranged. Okay. And in this case, what do we see? Look at these lines. We know that in our settlement, you must have looked at what they call, okay, in terms of settlement pattern, say it, we have uh, nucleated. Okay, then you have what you call dispersed. 
and we'll talk about new created settlements close to each other. Then here is settlement far away from each other. Okay, so if you check on the map, do you see anywhere where the settlements are so close to each other in one area like that? So that one is going to form a new created settlement pattern. What about this part? This part is going to form something like this when they are spread from each other. Okay, that is settlement pattern. Then the street pattern. Street pattern we have basically there is grid. Okay, we have plant, but plant we have plant regular and plant irregular. Okay. Then in this case, if it's gridion, it forms kind of grids, squares, straight. And normally it is one way. So when you check around here, what do you see? You can start list here where they form a grid pattern. See that? Okay. And see maybe around here from the grid pattern. Okay. Then these other ones like this one is planned irregular. Then you have that one that is not having a proper shape where the settlements are just spread out. Uh, the, like, um, the, the, the roads are just put anyway. So that one is irregular. But when you check there, you will see that there is one which is planned, there is one uh, which is grid, and the one which is uh, um, irregular or planned irregular and planned irregular. Check here. This is a very good example of grid street pattern. This is a very good example of grid street pattern. It's a very good example of planned regular. But if it is irregular, it simply means it is not making a proper shape. Take an example. This is unplanned street pattern. Because the way they appear, streets are joined anyway, the way they want them to be. So that is interpretation of settlement. You are applying the concepts of, of settlement. And that settlement concept, remember, it is coming in paper one, I mean in paper two, and the economic geography is also coming in paper two. So climatology and geomorphology is the application that is coming in paper one. So learners, get ready for those aspects. Be in position to interpret them, and then life moves on. So you need to pass as we expect. Okay, now, like I've been telling you that we have a lot of things to apply. Né? We have those areas that are flat, we have those areas that are steep. And how are they applicable? How are they important? If you look here, learners, we have faults here. We have canals. We have rivers. What do they all do? They all provide water for the farmers. Okay? The dams, they also do the same. They store water that is used during the dry season. Okay, so please, I'm trying to show you some of the aspects. Now, we can also apply another concept somewhere here. I want you to look here. This place here, because of the nature of the contour lines, it simply means that it's a bit gentler. Eh? And that means a gentle slope encourages the development of transport routes for easy accessibility. Now, check here. There are a lot of roads that are running around or running along this area because it's a bit flat. I want you to look at what is happening this other side. Because of the nature of the contour line, somewhere here, it is very steep. Therefore, because it is very steep, it discourages the growing, the, 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 what? the construction of rods. And the same thing that applies here. Okay? That's why you see there are no more many rods here. If you check the only road that is here, it is passing where it's a bit gentler. In other words, between the two high-lying areas, you see this is a mountain here, it's a mountain. So this one we shall call it a pass, okay, or a gap, where the roads are passing, okay. Now, you can see that this road, maybe it would have a chance to just go come direct through here if it wants to proceed, but it couldn't. Why? Because of the existence of the steep area. Therefore, the road tries to... Uh, pass around so that it can connect to other areas because those steep areas are very difficult to construct roads onto. So hope learners, you understand. Okay. 
we are still looking at interpretation. Whatever that I see that is really important for interpretation, I will please try to explain. Okay, there is another aspect that I also want to talk about that is uh, related to interpretation. That is the direction of the rivers and uh, the direction of the rivers. Okay, okay. Let me start from the direction of the rivers. Direction of the rivers. I want to use uh, this river here. They can ask, what is the direction of this river here? Okay, I might not be having a name for it on this map, but maybe it will have a name now. Let us use this as our example. Where does the, the river flow to? Do you think this river flows from the north to the south or it flows from the south to the north? Who would have thought? But in real sense, this river is flowing from the south to the north. Why? Because of the dam wall. It's not having tributaries. Look at the dam wall. The dam wall is this side and this is where the dam is, meaning that the water is flowing from here, then through the dam wall, it goes north. That is number one. Number two, which other evidence do you have to show that this river is flowing in a northerly direction? Is because of the nature of the contour lines or the gradient. Check here, Alanas. You see here, here is steeper, here is flatter. Meaning that the river flow from a higher lying area, low lying area. So this river cannot be flowing from this way, entering where it is mountainous. It can only flow from the side that is a little bit mountainous going downwards. Because remember, a river is a flow of or is water that swiftly flows from the source to the mouth under the influence of gravity. Okay. So this river cannot climb the mountain, but the river flows from a higher lying area to down or to downer areas. Now um, besides this, there is something that I want us to apply still. Look at this, this other part here. When you check that part, which stage of river do you think? Which stage of the river do you think this river uh, is called what? Swatkopras River flowing to. Where does it flow to? And then the next question can be which stage of this river. And then they can also ask some related aspects of um, they can ask some related aspects of um, uh, river buffering, the buffering or the buffer zones. But before we reach there, let us start from here. When you look at this river here, look at the way the shape, the pattern is forming. It's forming this meandering pattern. And besides that, we look at the nature of the contour lines. It's not that so steep. And it is not so that so flat. So when you look at this area, we understand that this river is in its last section. It's in the last course. So if it's in the last course, this is what we call meandering. Okay? And remember, in the meandering sections, there are some, there are some aspects we looked at. If it comes to meandering, Remember, we looked at aspects like what? We looked at aspects of meandering. Then we looked at issues of uh, the slip off. Then we looked at another issue of the undercut. And we know that if we talk about the undercut, what are we referring to? We are referring to the area that is experiencing erosion. When we talk about the slip off, we are referring to areas that are experiencing what? Deposition. Meaning that the slip off is what we refer to the outer, to the inner bend. Inner bend. And uh, the undercut is what we refer to as the outer bend. Let us check on this river that we are having. If you look at this river that is flowing like this, meaning that as it keeps on curving and bending, we have the inside part, which we said is the inner bend. Therefore, this one is formed by deposition and the outside bend, which is formed by uh, erosion. So outside is erosion, inside is deposition. And you know, when you talk about erosion, what do we expect? We refer to the fast moving water, fast flowing, sorry, fast flowing water. Then, we we'll talk about 
dominant activity is erosion. Okay, we talk about the gradient being a bit steeper. Okay, and then the velocity, high velocity of water. Then when we talk about the inner bend, what do we expect? Gentle gradient. Here, here you expect a gentle gradient. Okay. You expect aspects of deposition, slow flowing water, slow flowing water, and then um, ah, less velocity. Meaning that the inside bend, you expect slip off at the slope. And therefore, there is slow flowing water, mode B position. Okay. And uh, the outer bend, which we said it's an undercut, that's where we have water flowing faster. And we expect the erosion to take place. The area is a bit steeper, that's why it, water is flowing faster. And that fast flowing determines also the velocity. Okay. So that is what we refer to as meandering or a meander. So a meander is a landform. Meandering is a process through which that landform of a meander is formed. Okay. So when we check somewhere here, we can still see another feature. Which feature is this one here? The feature that we are seeing here in this area is what we call a braided stream. What is a braided stream? This is a depositional feature. It's a depositional feature that forms when the materials are deposited in the river channel. Are deposited in the river channel. Okay. Meaning that since the river is in its last stage, it means it has got less power to erode, less power to erode. Okay, so if it has got less power to erode, that means it dodges the material and later reconnects. That's why you see this river is flowing like this. So this one rejoins, this one rejoins, and then the river keep on flowing to another destination. Okay, now that is what you call a braided stream. So the area that is adjacent to the river, this part here, is what you call a flood plain. Okay, is what you call a flood plain. So learners, you can be in position to interpret those aspects. You can see that somewhere here is flat. That's why you see the area has got even the marsh and fay because the area is flat. It's having a lot of water that is sitting in that area. Okay. Remember, learners, don't forget, we are still looking at interpretation. And I am trying to, um, to put all the topics in the geography syllabus all together so that we can see how can each concept or how can the, the concepts be ap applied on what on the map okay if you see anything that is that you don't understanding please feel free to um to to ask questions or to leave a comment i'll be in position to answer you okay but in preparation for exams please take note of everything and let us try to, to pass. Okay. Now, besides this, there are some other interpretation concepts that can be applied. Take an example. There is this area here that is a bit far away from the residential areas. Okay. This area has got very big buildings. It has got even the zeros. What do zeros do? Those are the ones they use to store agricultural products or food. Okay. Now, when you check here, you will find out that there are very big uh, uh, settlements here. There are very big buildings here. Okay, these buildings, we can term them as industrial areas. 
and we can is uh, what do we remember when we're talking about the industrial areas first of all industrial areas are meant to be far away from from the settlements because of the noise okay industrial areas um are meant to be have stay to be in areas where the land is cheaper is cheap and available like large areas where those industries can be established okay it is established close to the roads or communication lines okay which you can see that there is a road here that is going there's a road there's a road and so on meaning that this industrial area is basically this area is basically an industrial area according to the interpretation of the diagram Okay, now, now, I want us to proceed and look at, keep looking at other aspects. We are still looking at interpretation learners. I told you, today, at least I want to see the interpretation part. There's another time where I handled the calculations. And I know that I finished all those calculations. If there is anything that is remaining, please let me know. I will rehandle uh, re it. But if there is nothing, we are still moving forward. And apparently, I want us to look at interpretation. And as, as far as interpretation is concerned, we are almost done. Because we have looked at all the possible ways in which questions can be asked in relation to the different topics that we have looked at. Okay. Now. Here we go. We look at another area here on the map. What do we see? Do you see somewhere here? These are industrial areas. Okay. Those are industrial areas. What do we remember? Like we mentioned above, that all those industrialized areas will be built, first of all, next to the major communication uh, lines. Take an example here. There's a road here, uh, 102. There's another one here. It is a, a railway line there. There are actually a lot of railway lines there. Okay, so these are industrial built up areas, meaning that such industries discourage people to settle close to them because of the noise they make, the noise pollution. So people are staying basically far away from those industries. The reason why they are close to the main road is mainly because they need to transport, is the transportation of raw materials from one point to another, and then the finished goods. Okay, so we can have a lot of factors. For example, some of the questions they can ask here, like um, explain maybe or give or discuss or whatever, two factors um, that uh, have, let, have contributed to the location of those industries wherever they are. Okay, maybe the industries in, in Strundali. So what do we look at? We look at aspects like, for example, flatland, and you can see the area is flat because the contour lines are not so close to each other. Okay, that is number one. Then the, the very big space available. The very big space available, okay, for the expansion of industries. Okay, then we also talk about uh, the proximity or the closeness to the main roads. Okay, the existence of the main roads, the existence of the main roads, all right, the existence of the main roads, So those questions can be asked that what are the factors that have contributed to the location of these industries wherever they are? Number one, they are far away from people. They need a flat area. Um, they, they are far away from people. They need a very flat area, accessibility, the roads, closeness to the water bodies, or to the water for easy access to water, 
you understand um close to uh, other uh, residential ao um we are saying that they, 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 they must be far from people because it makes noise in the road the flat area the cheap land a, a very large space for, for their expansion okay and therefore we also talk about the capital that is uh, basically needed from the nearby um, people or the cheap labor that they can easily access so you can see that here is basically a developed area okay it's more of a very developed area here then here is an industrial area what do we notice here that industrial areas are located and on the outskirts of the city far away from the people okay and it is exactly depicted here you can see these are settlements around here this is an, a developed town or a well a structured town and then you can see that the settlements or the industries are a bit far away from from people okay now those are some of the aspects and we can talk about there okay now uh i will really talk about these aspects of conservation sorry the aspects of conservation and the flow of rivers maybe here I for, after seeing this i remembered here we can tell another the way we can another way we can tell the direction of the river is by looking at the, the angle at which the tributaries are joining the main river now let's check here this one is joining this one like this so it is flowing to that extreme end this one is joining like this okay so it is flowing this way you can see the way at which angles are joining the rivers are joining others you can see this one is joining this one and then it flows downwards meaning that these rivers are flowing towards this other main river and when you look at this nature of the river there's another river there so how does this river flow how is it flowing you can see it's basically flowing towards that direction so it's flowing towards this direction okay so the angles you look at the v determines the direction to which the river is flowing to maybe another concept that we can apply here is the concept of the stream ordering we look at stream ordering we look at the independent streams for example one and one it makes two one and one it makes two one and one it makes two in other words, these are all second stream orders but we shall understand that clearly when you look at another clear diagram okay now when you check here you can see uh other symbols now if you do not know what the symbol means this is the uh, the right time for you to know if you still don't understand what this symbol means what this one means what this one means and so on and so forth so you must now this is when you look at this symbol you go to the map and then check okay and then you check and then you will understand that this symbol means this this one means this and this one means this okay all right now this is another uh another map that is trying to give us another clear view of the interpretation you check that you see that this river river grotty here grotty this this river this river is flowing in this kind of shape so this kind of shape we call it what what you call a meandering river so when you check this river this river is meandering so this one if um you remember the meandering process say this is the curving and the bending of river it happens in the lower section or when the gradient is a bit gradual or flatter and when you check here this kind of gradient is the same you see so this river is flowing curving and bending like that remember inside one is slip off outside is undercut so we said outside is all is, is um steep slope inside is a gentle slope you can even see here the nature of the contour lines out here is basically depicting a steeper area compared to what is inside here so that is application of uh, another concept now that this is now trying to assist us to get to know 
more other maps. How can it appear? Please learn has been positioned to tell how it appears. Okay. If uh, you remember in your settlement, you must have looked at this kind of uh, a settlement pattern. Okay. This is what you call a radio settlement pattern, a radio street pattern. Okay. Radio means when the roads are radiating or connecting towards one central place. Okay. If you check here, this is a road, this is a road, this is a road, this is a road, basically a cobweb. Okay, it forms this kind of cobweb. So this kind of uh, um of, of settlement or the nature of the streets, the way they lay is determined by the main roads that are connecting the main central place. So here is a central place, which is going to be our now CBD, that is having many openings of the roads from the nearby surrounding area. So those roads are all connecting towards the one central place. Okay, so this one forms what you call a cobweb kind of settlement or street pattern. Okay, other activities, other interpretation that you can look at for the mine dump, you can see the DPR, you can see the roads, okay? You can see the roads here, okay? You can see the development of the town, you can see mining taking place around here, you can see drive-in theater, meaning that there's entertainment taking place. So in other words, there are a lot of things that we can interpret on the map. There is a mining museum, which now indicates that if it's a museum, it's basically promoting culture. Okay, and then here is what you call a big hole Kimberley mine. That means there's mining taking place. Oh, there was mining that was taking place there. Okay, so basically this is a mining town. If you remember very well what we talked about in settlement, in, maybe with your teachers, is what you call a specialized town, basically doing one activity. For example, mining town. Okay, and this way, so an example of the mining town to say so because around here it's basically surrounded by mining only as the main activity. Okay. Now we still look at other aspects here. Okay. Remember, learners, it is nothing like I'm I'm trying to it's not that I'm trying to repeat these aspects, but I'm trying to show you that on different maps, if they bring you any map from any area. You can be in position to interpret first oriented the map when you're given the map. Check nicely. And then before you even check the questions, think of the possible kind of uh, questions that can be um, asked. Okay. So the possible kind of questions that can be asked depend on maybe how the map is. Okay. So if you oriented the map nicely, you'll be in position to figure out the kind of the possible questions that can be asked in that case. So learners, these are kind of the things that you're looking at. Okay. So here is a, a arterial route. Here are 64 that is uh, cutting through this place. There is a diamond park. There is a cutter's clan. Okay. Those are just towns. The sewage dams. That means there is a, if you remember about this, if you see sewage, and the cemetery, in terms of the arrangement of the city, which kind of land use is that? Okay? Which kind of land use? You can see the park there. There is a park there. There is a, a, a what? A, 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 a what? How, a cemetery. There is a sewage works there somewhere. A sewage down somewhere. Recreation, rest track. You can see all that. So this is an example. Or oh, this is giving you an example that this one is a transition zone okay whereby these activities are basically taking place that way so you know sewage is set is always far away from people because of the smell it gives this one requires very big space the cemetery this is a racing track it also requires a flat area and a bit far away from people so in this case you get to know that if you are interpreting they can also ask such questions identify the land use in a certain block, let me say C1 or B1 or C2, remember, it will be visible on the map. So in this case, you look at the possible activities taking place. If it's a central place or if a CBD, which is, it must be lying in the center. So if it's a CBD, it must be lying in the center, number one. If it's a CBD, it must be connected by other routes towards that central place that is connecting to it. 
okay then the developments that are going to be taking place around it then we have a transition zone we have rural urban fringe okay the rural urban fringe we have the rural areas actually this one should be rural urban fringe okay the rural urban not the transition zone sorry the rural urban fringe because a transition zone is the area that has got mixed functions some um some houses uh, appear to be of a township area or of a township character some other houses are tall some other houses are short so mixed function is taking place there and no transition zone will have a lot of uh, uh that kind of art there shading on the walls and all that and all so on so in this case sorry for that this area here the land use around this town here it should be a rural urban fringe so learners i want you to note that when they talk about rural urban fringe please remember you must know that the area should have at least any of these activities number one sewage terms sewage works a cemetery a golf course a landing site uh a track a race track all those kind of activities are taking place in the area that we call a rural urban fringe okay now which is the dominant activity taking place here if you look at it eh? if you look at it what do you think should be the dominant activity okay there are a lot of reservoirs there are a lot of furrows okay which is basically transporting water row of trees you can see the row of trees that are built around the water areas what does that mean and what does it imply you know trees provide shades to the crops that's number one okay trees helps to shield the crops from the very strong winds that are likely to affect the crops on the farm so if you see the row of trees think of the advantages if it's around the crops what could be the advantages okay and now when you check this area you can see it's a bit flatter that means it can easily favor agriculture and the flat area also favors easy flow of the drainage systems the rivers and the water when they want to irrigate this area around here or the crops around the bay okay there are a lot of reservoirs there are a lot of furrows so when you look at this area you can see that this is dominantly an agricultural settlement where agriculture is mainly being practiced okay now you check another area here it's a bit flatter so it's a low-lying area and what do you expect there are a lot of roads that are connected there okay and then uh, there are a lot of uh, uh what you call um uh, seasonal rivers you can look at this maybe i also forgot to mention that while in looking at interpretation when you talk about uh seasonal rivers it must be a blue line but broken line broken dotted line so it's going to be seasonal or non-perennial river okay or periodic river so if you see it broken or dotted line just know it's non perennial river if you see it um let me check compare it with another one that is maybe um you look at this one when you check this river here it's giving us an example of what we call a permanent river what are permanent rivers those are rivers that are flowing throughout the year where the riverbed is always under the water table both during the dry season and the wet season so meaning that the relationship between the water table and the riverbed uh, is always the water table is always above so this river will be flowing throughout the year so that river how do you identify it on the map identify it on the map if you see it uh, with blue line that is continuously uh, existing take an example if this was blue like that it's going to indicate what we call a permanent river but if it's a broken line like this one like this one blue but broken line we call it a seasonal river or non perennial river so such areas are having such non perennial rivers okay and the last thing that i want us to look at is this part here on the map um this part here you can see in terms of its gradient it is a very flat area depending on the nature of the contour lines you can easily see them you can even see the way the water is uh, existing like there are a lot of several pockets of water that is um, colonized within one area 
and that means that area is a bit flatter. So, hope learners, I have not left out anything related to interpretation. So, please get to in position to be in position to tell in summary or in a nutshell, be in position to tell how all the topics you have looked at, both in paper one and paper two, how can they be applied on the map? Everything that you look at is very, very, very important. It's very, very important in order to apply it on the map. If there is anything that I have not interpreted for you, please be in position to leave your comment, be in position to, 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 to let us know that you really need that aspect and we shall be in position to handle it nicely. Okay, but all in all, that is what I wanted to show you regarding interpretation. That's what I wanted to reflect to you relation to interpretation and uh, all is done nicely thank you so much thank you for listening and thank you for watching see you